It will not stop me from going on an adventure, doing something daring if I'm just spending time with myself. I tend to be a rather free-spirited person and if you have some time to kill and a day to spend in Richmond, California and you want to see some cool, hidden, and unusual things, then these might pique your interest. I'm here in Richmond, California today and we're gonna go see some places that have been described as cool, hidden, and unheard of. So we're gonna go to some off the beaten track sort of places, check them out, and the best part is they're not gonna break your budget because they are completely free. But I am gonna start off my journey today somewhere that is not free, but it still won't break the budget. And I was here yesterday and it's wonderful. First, before starting our adventure, I wanted to get some coffee and I came here yesterday and I enjoyed my coffee so much that I figure I better go back to the same spot because I know it's going to be good. Hi there, I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm going to have a cappuccino. Am I doing whole milk? Yes, whole milk is good for me. So four dollars please. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. To be completely honest with you, I really wasn't sure about this cappuccino when I got it because it looked so different from the one that I got yesterday. It was just a completely different beverage, but I was willing to give it a shot and the guy working was super nice and he showed me this really cool outdoor area. Wow, yeah. I'll check it out. Thank you. <laughs> I went to this coffee spot a few times and there's one barista who makes the drinks exactly how I like them and then the other baristas made them pretty good. Wow, what a boon. They have this cool patio area that I didn't even know of. So this is the Caterhula Cafe and this cappuccino is actually quite different than the cappuccino I had yesterday. The one I had yesterday was like not as foamy and it had a cool design, so just different baristas. This one has a lot more foam, like it's much more of a foamy dry cappuccino and um, the flavor of both of them are incredible. So yes, this place is a good little cafe if you're in the Richmond area and want to grab yourself a cappuccino or some other coffee beverage. I really like, I was looking online and a couple things that I saw about this place in particular, it said online that they use organic milk and they also roast their own beans. So those are two things that are so great when it comes to a coffee shop and the drinks taste good. And the staff is really friendly. That dude was super friendly he showed me the patio area the person who made my drink yesterday was super awesome so it's got good vibes in there and it's a cool spot we're now headed to our first cool hidden unusual place and I think if there's any war buffs that watch my videos you may be particularly interested in a couple of the places we're gonna check out today I don't really know if there are any war buffs but We're having a little bit of a rocky start because after doing a lot of U-turns trying to find this place, I just could not find it. Well, I've got to say I'm beginning to understand why this these places are described as hidden because I've been trying to get there with my GPS and I've been going up and down the same road trying to figure out where the heck I'm supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think I know so I finally just pulled over where it said it is and uh, I'm not seeing it sorry to any war buffs if you are out there watching I just could not find the abandoned Cold War missile radar site I was looking for there's really nowhere to go from here on this I'm looking for a trailhead and I just have no idea what I'm looking for here is this abandoned Cold War missile site and I'm not finding it. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I really hope that we have better luck at the next place that we're going to go or this is just going to be ridiculous. The things are so cool, so unknown and so hidden, you literally can't find them. Oh my goodness. Well, we'll see. Hopefully we got better luck next time. 
As I was pulling into this next place, it was starting to feel more promising already. I had a feeling we were on the right track. Wow, just as I was getting out of my car, there was a security guard walking up and I was like, uh, can I park here? I really want to go check out that little beach over there. And he was like, well, you're not really supposed to, but you're not going to be long. I was like, well, I won't be that long. So he was nice about it. But I'm beginning to understand why these places are called hidden. Usually when you approach a destination that you're going to, there's some sort of marking, some sort of sign, something letting you know you're in the right place. These places don't seem to be marked, so you kind of have to know about them to find them, at least based on the first two. The first one I couldn't even find in this one, but uh, we found it. Yes! Oh my heavens, it's wonderfully beautiful. Welcome to Tepco Beach. This small beach is a former dumping ground for Tepco Ceramics Manufacturer. The company was founded in 1930 by Italian immigrant John Pagliero. They produce dinnerware for restaurants in the San Francisco Bay Area, for local restaurants, for consumers, and also for the U.S. Navy and Army. The company permanently shut down after a destructive fire in 1968, but for decades prior to that, they were El Cerrito's largest employer. For years, the factory used this beach to dump their defective and broken stock. It was a pretty special and unique experience to walk on the beach completely covered in ceramic pieces. I enjoyed the sounds the pieces made as I walked across them and it was nice feeling the smooth edges in my hands. And it's interesting that all the dishware still covers the shores all these years later. Even though there are a lot of people that say that these dishes were clunky and ugly, there are other Californians that are collectors of the intact pieces and hold on to this piece of history. Well, that was a unique experience, but let's get out of here because we promised the security guard we wouldn't be gone too long. But I must say, it makes it a little more exciting adventuring when you really know you're going to unknown places. They're not marked, they're not advertised. It's amazing that you can find them if you look online, but if you don't, you would never know this was here. And it's very unusual, where else? Would you go on a beach full of pottery? Before I left, I wanted to hunt down that security guard because he expressed interest in checking out the beach. He said all the time he's worked there, he's never gone down there and he thought that he should go check it out. He asked about it and he thought maybe his dogs would like it down there. And so I just wanted to let him know that, yeah, it's a worthy experience. It's something different, something unusual. It's actually really beautiful and I do think that his dogs would enjoy it. Hey, I just wanted to say thanks. Oh, I'm about to take you. off, oh, right. but thanks for letting me park there, and uh, I'd recommend going down. Yeah. It's an unusual experience. Yeah. I, yeah. What is like, uh, see like a lot of pottery? Just Tons, walking. like all across the whole beach. It's just pottery, broken yeah. pottery. Wow. And some of it feels really like smooth, and it's just different, you know? Yeah. You don't see that every day, so yeah. I'd recommend it. Your dogs would probably like it down there, too. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. This next destination is the other one that the war buffs, if there are any, might find rather interesting. But let's see here. I want to see if I can get inside and get closer. There's all this fencing. So I'm going to see if I can find a way in. Well, look at this. The fence looks open. 
We're now entering the Richmond shipyards. During World War II, these shipyards built more ships than any other location. An impressive 747 ships were constructed in World War II, and this is a number that no other site in the world has accomplished. Production of these ships started in 1940, and by 1944, they became so incredibly efficient at building the ships that it only took two weeks two short weeks to complete an entire Liberty ship. This kind of production, as you can imagine, called for lots of manpower, and people from all over the country came to Richmond to help the war efforts. The population of the area more than tripled in size in just three years. Today, the shipyards are part of the Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront Historical Park. Spending time here almost felt like entering a time capsule. I could envision the hustle and bustle and the energy of the time when this was a very happening place where there was people all over constructing these massive ships in such a intense time. It's so interesting that things in life are so temporary. They start, they come to fruition, and then they eventually end up fizzling away. It's almost like the budding of a flower. It starts with a bud, goes full bloom, and then wilts away. There's so many instances in life where this model is represented. Even here on these shipyards, it started off as a place, it brought in tons of people, tons of stuff going on, and then it fizzled out to where today it's still a very interesting place with interesting stuff going on, but it's nowhere near what it would have been when it was in full bloom and all the production was happening. I've got to say, this place definitely feels hidden, unusual, and extremely cool. It is living up to its name, and I feel like a detective or something. It's just got a really cool vibe exploring a place like this. We're now heading to our last destination, on this cool, unusual, hidden tour, which really is living up to its name. And this destination might be of particular interest if there are any winos out there, people who like wine. So you may be in for a treat, as well as potentially people who like abandoned buildings, which I love abandoned buildings. When I was younger, I used to go explore inside abandoned buildings and I love that kind of stuff. So let's see if we can check it out. Let's see how close we can get to the actual thing and uh, you'll learn more about this place. This abandoned building was once one of the largest wineries in the world. This old brick castle looking building was basically the world's largest winery for 12 years. The winery's large scale operation employed around 400 people and produced 12 million gallons of wine every single year. It was a pretty successful operation, and during the peak of its success, it was forced into shutting down all of its major operations because of prohibition in the year 1919. In 1941, the Navy purchased the property and converted it into a fuel supply depot. Fuel tanks were built into the hillside and pipes led down to fuel the ships at the pier. And they were particularly active doing this during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. In 1995, the property was handed over to the city of Richmond, where it remains a piece of deserted and abandoned history. And I gotta say, walking around, <laughs> it's hot. The sun is like beating down on me right now. 
Part of the fun for me when I explore abandoned buildings is going inside and checking things out. Just as I thought that wasn't going to happen, there was no way in, I saw this little opening and I walked up and I wondered what was in there and I was able to go through and check all this out. This is the only point of entry that I could really find where I could kind of get in, but we're like still outside. We're under this massive deck. But just after I said, oh man, it's hot, I found this place and it's so much cooler down here. We're amidst all this dirt and it just has like this coolness radiating from it. But I am interested. It's looking pretty interesting over there. So I'm wondering if there's a way down. I think that thing really. <laughs> That thing looks pretty good. These used to be the elevators. Check it out. Big elevators that are no longer in function or else I'd go up uh -huh. this is what i was thinking was interesting there's some stairs they look pretty broken and busted this is interesting I was able to make it inside, and as soon as I got out there, it became pretty clear that I was not the first. Look at all the tagging. There was definitely been people in here before me. I wasn't the first, and I surely won't be the last, but if you're interested in adventuring and seeing these places, there's many ways to do it. There is the way of the less adventurous person, which is a lot more safe and better to do anyway, which is just walk around the property. You could even just drive around the property outside the fences and not have to worry about anything after going through all that <laughs> look how I could have got there just hopped right up <laughs> oh but that was part of the adventure of it all so I hope you enjoyed checking out this abandoned building where like so much used to go down this was like a mecca of wine it's incredible and now that we're done with our cool unusual unheard of places let me just give you the verdict on the experience my conclusion and my conclusion is that i feel almost like part of this secret club that knows about these places because they're not advertised there's no signs you would never know they're there but they are places of historical significance that you can learn about and actually go visit and check out so yeah Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and post all your questions and all your comments down below. I love reading your comments. They really are wonderful. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.